Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about things that programmers should learn early on. So let's get into it. So the question in question here, Frederick, was what is uh, what are a few things that beginner programmers or people who get into programming should learn fairly quickly or early on in their career? And there's so much stuff here that it's uh, I'm just going to try to narrow it down to something that I think is not a complete repeat of me basically. I have an old video where I basically state that, hey, the first thing a beginner programmer should master is Googling skills or search skills or figuring out problems by finding information on the internet. That's a very valuable skill. But if we're going to touch on something a little bit higher level than that, that I think is fairly important and something that I see consistently, I will say that the most important thing or one of the most important things to learn early on in your career is to learn the motions of a story or the motions of working within a company. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I don't really have a better term for it, but something that is, it is in a way one of the biggest differences between a senior developer and a junior developer. And that is that the junior developer has, has a very strong focus on the coding itself, which is great because you should, because you're learning to write good software and so forth. But at some point you're going to get to that stage in your career when you start to feel as if you are limited by other factors than your own coding skills. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's very simple. So in the beginning, the limiting factor for you when it comes to building the things that you want to build is your own skill. You don't have them. You don't have the experience or the knowledge to build things in the way that you want them to be built and have them come out the way that you want them to come out. But when you get to that point, and you will get to that point, you will have the skills, you will be able to build pretty much whatever you want, then you will start to realize that the limiting factor for you is usually technical decisions that have been made that limit you in your ability to make a decision here today or stakeholders, people who are setting requirements on you of time or things of this nature that limits you in another fashion. You uh, are basically limited by external factors apart from your coding skill. Now, this is where this understanding of motion or this understanding of the patterns of working, the waves, if you will, of uh, of uh, delivering software. This is where this actually becomes very important because one thing that you can pretty much forget, and this is something that if you accept this and start to think about this in a broader perspective, I think that this is going to help you quite a lot. One thing that is very common, just in general for me, is to see junior developers get from the stage where, all right, I'm super nervous, I'm super stressed out, Frederick's sitting here next to me and judging me, even though I'm not judging them, but you know, I try to be as forthcoming and like, uh, try to be the, well, I try to create comfort, but it's very hard to create comfort in someone who has something to prove to you and feel like they're inferior to you and sometime, sometimes. Uh, but they do, you know, they feel that stress and they go from that stage until they feel comfortable with me or they feel comfortable working in their role. And then it always happens, like this always happens where they start to question the code. We, some, a coworker of mine used to call it the code mock. Now the code mock is basically a stage in a programmer's career or a pro programmer's time during an employment where they will start to look at parts of the code and go, oh, this is ugly, or they will kind of you know, look down their noses and say that this is really bad code. We should fix it, we should rewrite it, we should do this, we should do that, we should do this, we should do that. And usually it's depending on their experience level. Now, this is actually kind of funny because the experienced programmer will not do that as much. They will, you know, kind of go, yeah, this is a really good code and then they will still work with it and they will still find out or find a way to work around it or to solve it in some other fashion. Now the junior is just going to get angry or upset or start making throwing a, th a fit around it and behave uh, as if, you know, 
it's that it's more they will push things and I did this as well they you will put they will push things such as uh, you know rewrites and so forth as if it's more important to rewrite the code and make the code nice as opposed to delivering on features or something like that and this is where this lack of understanding comes in this is where you you don't understand as a junior this is one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to describe why a junior cannot be a senior when they actually come out into the workplace because you don't get it. you you don't get it you don't have the experience to understand why you will never get that rewrite it's very simple because to the company there is a balance between you refactoring things and producing results and depending on the sort of company that you are working for that balance will be somewhere on a scale now people are people will argue that in certain companies it's a very you're on the on the far side of things and you might actually do get some time to refactor things and on another company you are even like you're on the low scale where people will just kind of go what, what are you talking about we don't have time for this we need to do other things like we you know so forth usually you're somewhere in between where your stakeholders or so forth they actually they will allow you some extra time usually you I, I, this is just me giving you some uh, a rule of thumb here this is as data that's just based on my experience you can pretty much I can say that depending on company if you want to improve something, refactor something or fix something, you usually can measure the allowed time in this way. Are you working on that thing you want to improve right now? Does this thing impose any risk of delays that stretches more than one or two days tops to the current thing that you are working with? If you ever go out of the bounds of these, to these rules in any fashion, <clears throat> you are going to very often get questioned and people will try to stop you like your manager or so forth they will ask for do we have alternatives like are there any well because they don't want the delay guys they don't want you to delay it they don't want you to invest in it and that's the thing what you don't understand is that if a product is ongoing if you have a deadline where you have something that needs to be shipped at that given moment you are in a very bad position to bargain for something that is not directly critical to the delivery and success of that project. This is the thing that is understanding the motions. So what, what you really need to master is to, under, uh, you, you need to understand the perspective of your stakeholders and not just what they tell you but also what they will do the behavior of other programmers the behavior of your stakeholders in general an example i would that gets a little bit more concrete is that i have i have worked with a team of very skilled developers for quite some time one thing that they that has taken i, I have had to lobby for this quite often quite a lot, even to the PO who is a C, who's my senior in many, 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 many ways when it comes to work experience and work life experience. And I've said to them, like, we've talked about improvements, but they kind of like, and then there are a com few complaints within the team that, oh, we don't really improve things so much. Like, it feels like we're just talking about things, but we never really get them to get done right. And I go, it's actually very simple. The reason why we're never getting there is because we keep on cutting corners. We promise ourselves, we promise ourselves that we will improve this it's just that when you try to improve it you are already in a position where you have a deadline or you have some type of scheduled work that you need to do so it's kind of like it's it's uh, the, the problem is that you're trying to improve things or trying to push for these non so-called non-critical things when the timing is bad and you're basically trying to fix things and make them nice and take your time when you don't actually have that option you can and you know, i don't know how many times i've heard this promise told well we're just, you know we are going to focus more on quality we're going to slow down a little bit and take our time and really do this well and i like go oh, no you're not you're never going to do that i can promise you you will not the second anything becomes a little bit inconvenient in terms of time or you feel that oh shit uh, this is taking a little bit longer than expected you will start to cut corners directly immediately because regardless of what you promise yourself three months you know today in three months you will forget that and you will prioritize it differently because the situation has changed and now it's more important to ship today than in a week 
when that happens, it's already too late. In other words, when you accept that, when you start to see this pattern that you make, the, it's almost like New Year's Eve. You see people make these false promises. You see people, one of my favorite ones is cognitive exhaustion. I had this yesterday with a coworker. So he's been stuck on the same story for five weeks. I will tell you another day about what he's working on because I've been, I'm fortunate enough to have to help him with this. But he's been stuck on the same thing for five weeks when the original estimation was two days to do this. And by the end of it, when we're finally seeing the end of the tunnel, we realize that shit, because of the way that somebody else has implemented a specific feature, we're kind of stuck here. I, and his first thought is not to, oh shit, we need to rewrite this because, and because that is the right decision. It is the right decision for the code and the product to rewrite that specific part. It's not impossible, but it is inconvenient to him. It is exhausted. He's already exhausted. He's, he's mentally exhausted and he doesn't want to do it. And he starts to try to figure out how can we hack around this? Not because it's the right decision, but because he's tired. This is one of the best motivations as to why you want to keep your story small. Because if you get to a point where you are ex mentally exhausted from this, and you will, as a programmer, you, there if you work for long enough on the same thing and you feel like it's a pain, you want to abandon it as quickly as possible. Mentally, you want to abandon it. And I asked him, dude, if you were sitting here today, you started today to work on this, what would the right decision be? Not now, because now you're tired and you're exhausted. You don't want to do this anymore. But if you started fresh today, what would you try? And he's kind of going, well, OK, yeah, I would probably try to refactor this. I would probably try to fix this. Uh, and I go, yeah, that's exactly it. So learn to know yourself. So what I want you to take away from this is that the one of the things that you need to learn very early on is how software works, not, not just how you work, not how, just how the code works, but how other people work, what the trends are, like the false promises programmers tell themselves. It, there's an old rule that says if something becomes a to do, it's never going to happen. These are truths, experience that more senior, de senior developers have given us and shared with us you need to learn these sorts of things. And this is, that's, it comes with experience. It's actually funny, we were saying that if uh, there's an expiration date on programmers, now the most bitter old programmers in the world, these are the true professionals. These are the guys and girls who have seen it all. They have gone through all of this and they are bitter as fuck. And that's the, it's almost the lifespan of every program. You start out naive and like everything's about the code and you're all innocent and stuff. And then over time you start to realize that shit, there's all, the, there are all these sorts of problems that come along the way. And my tip to you is simply try to spot these patterns and start acting on them. As an example, if you want to refactor, improve things, don't try to refactor, improve things when you're like one week away from the deadline. You need to make a commitment to improve your work process earlier so that when you get to a situation where you want to hack things and you want to do these things, you don't actually have to. Improve things before you get to a situation where it's too late to make them nice. Because at that moment, you're not going to think straight. You're going to prioritize the here and now. The long term needs to be a systematic plan thing. That's just one of the many patterns that I've seen myself. Have a great day.